In this video, I will be explaining the conformity assessment procedures related to the notified bodies. Learning this will help you on your way to C marking your devices, which I'm guessing is very important, right? So stay tuned. So I am Pontus Jeda. I am the nerdy guy that likes regulations. And maybe that's why I have been working for Notified Bodies the last seven years. And you are watching a video that's part of my course, Introduction to MDR, the Medical Device Regulation. You can register for it by clicking in the link in the video description below or by visiting medicaldevicehu.com and browse through all of our courses on the MDR, on CE marking, design control or risk management for medical devices. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button and make sure to turn on the notifications so you never miss a new video. Notified body conformity assessment, according to most manufacturers, I guess, is the most challenging part of the C marking process. The main objective of the conformity assessments is that it shall lead to a notified body EC certificate that says that you, the manufacturer, can CE mark your medical devices. So let's start. As I just said, the purpose of the conformity assessment is to get an EC certificate. And the maximum validity length of a notified body EC certificate is five years, meaning that a normal conformity assessment cycle is also five years. The MDR requirements for notified body conformity assessments are a bit spread out in the MDR. The bases are found in Article 52 with references to the three different conformity assessment procedure annexes 9, 10 and 11. Then how the conformity assessment is actually done is best described in the Notified Body Annex, Annex 7, under section 4.5. As I said, the normal conformity assessment cycle is five years and such a cycle can be illustrated like this. And the goal of the conformity assessment is for the manufacturer to receive its EC certificate from the notified body to be able to see mark their products with a reference to the notified body's identification number. The start of the initial conformity assessment is the manufacturer's application to the notified body. Then based on the application data, the notified body should be able to set up a so-called five-year plan that shall cover all planned activities for the coming certification cycle. The five-year plan then needs to be continuously updated during the cycle by the notified body, of course. By default, initial certification requires a QMS on-site audit and initial technical documentation assessment. The initial QMS audit is composed of a stage one audit where the notified body ensures that the manufacturer's QMS covers all applicable requirements of the MDR. The stage one audit duration is typically around 30% of the complete initial audit time. Based on the output of the stage one audit, the notified body then decides on when the stage two or also called certification audit can be conducted. But before stage two audit is performed, the initial TD assessment, technical documentation assessment, shall be reported to the client and also form input to the stage two audit. As you might understand here is that this timing can sometimes be a bit tricky for the notified body and potentially lead to delays. This is since the output of the TD assessment is dependent very much on the quality of the TD sent in by the manufacturer. So my best tip to all manufacturers is to send in only complete and well-structured technical documentation to avoid delays. When the stage two audit has been performed, and any non-conformities have been properly addressed and the initial TD assessment is reported and any potential non-conformities from that assessment have been properly addressed by the manufacturer, then the first MDR EC certificate can be granted to the manufacturer by the notified body. 
The extent of the initial and coming audit activities to be performed by the notified body is normally depending on the size of the manufacturer and the extent of their QMS. For a manufacturer with approximately 10 employees or also called FTE, full-time equivalents, the initial audit will take somewhere around five days in total and for a manufacturer with 100 employees approximately the double. The number of technical documentations to be sampled is depending on the product portfolio range and classes but also on the diversity. This since sampling is done depending on how much differences there is in the products to be covered by the certificate. This is also summarized below this video. That was the initial certification. Then, within 12 months of the certification date, the notified body needs to perform the first annual surveillance audit and, once again, there should be a TD assessment performed in conjunction with this audit. The requirement for the notified body with regards to the TD assessment is that the technical documentation shall be sampled and assessed yearly until the full range of manufacturer's devices have been covered. Here it can be worth mentioning that according to MDCG 2019-13, the depth of the TD assessment shall actually be the same for class 2A, 2B and class 3. But even if this is clearly stated in this MDCG endorsed document, I know that this is not always the case with all notified bodies. Anyway, there will be a difference in the amount of technical files to be called in, since for class 3 devices, all devices need to have their technical documentation assessed before you get your EC certificate. And please note that for class 3 implantable devices and class 2B active devices intended to administer and or remove a medicinal product, there is also the requirement to go through a clinical evaluation consultation procedure. <laughs> this means that the notified body shall send their clinical evaluation assessment report of the manufacturer's clinical evaluation to a designated expert panel for a second opinion and their recommendation. So this takes a bit of time also. When during the certification cycle the full range of devices of the manufacturer has been assessed by the notified body by TD assessment and there is still time left on the certification cycle, the notified body shall focus on technical documentation relating to post-market surveillance during the upcoming remaining audits of that cycle. So, when no more TD sampling is to be done, the focus will be the PMS-related documentations during the coming audits. The coming surveillance audits shall then also be done within 12 months after the previous audit. These surveillance audits shall also cover potential critical supplier audits as decided and included in the notified body's audit program. A supplier audit can also be required with the initial stage 2 audit. And at least one unannounced audit shall be done by the notified body during each certification cycle. Also during the certification cycle, the manufacturer is obliged to report changes in their QMS and in their product portfolio to the notified body. Also, any potential vigilance and the mandatory PSURs shall be reported to the notified body. So all this information also serves as input to the notified body's five-year plan and can be potential triggers for extra TD assessment, special assessment, extra audits or even unannounced audits. And unannounced audits can also be done by the notified body to the manufacturer's critical suppliers. And unannounced audits under MDR shall normally include the notified body to perform or witness actual product tests.
And before the end of a certification cycle, the notified body will need an application from the manufacturer to request recertification. This application could basically be as extensive as the initial formal application, but not necessarily, depending on potential changes, of course. The notified body then needs to perform a recertification audit to be able to prolong the EC certificate with a new five-year validity. Before the certificate will get a new five-year validity, the notified body also needs to ensure that everything according to the initial five-year plan has been performed and managed correctly. And when the manufacturer requests a recertification, the notified body also now needs to set up a new five-year plan to plan the activities for the coming certification cycle, which will basically need to include to do everything that was done in the first cycle all over again, meaning calling in technical documentation again and perform new regular and unannounced audits. So the fun basically never ends and with that conclusion I end this video on the general setup of a conformity assessment. Did you learn new things from this video or liked it? Do those in your network on LinkedIn a favor by sharing this video and while you're at it make sure to connect with us on LinkedIn. You'll find us at Medical Device HQ. Once again, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, do it now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.